whether found on physical examination or by a physician on clinical examination or incidentally on imaging, any mass or any growth in the body is extremely alarming to the patient. So to get a quick and accurate diagnosis with minimal psychological and physical uh, difficulty or discomfort to the patient should be the extreme priority of any healthcare team. One such investigation which is minimally invasive office procedure is fine needle aspiration cytology or fine needle aspiration biopsy. Fine needle aspiration cytology uh, and uh, we will go through the advantages, indication, contraindication and procedure and the uh, two different types of fine needle aspiration cytology. Regarding history of FNAC, it was first introduced in uh, America by Dr. Hayes Martin in 1930s. You know Hayes Martin who contributed a lot in head and neck dissection but he used large bore needles and in Europe it was popularized in 1950 by Lopez and Cardoso and the present technique of fine needle aspiration was published and popularized by Dr. Sajisek in Karolinska Hospital, Stockholm. Okay, so what are the advantages? So these are the advantages. It is an office procedure. It has got a high diagnostic accuracy. That is, we can diagnose 95% of benign lesions and around 87% of malignant lesions. Minimally invasive and rapid test, safe and cost effective procedure and it is good test for both screening as well as follow up. And also the fine needle aspiration uh, material can be sent for, we can do multiple tests using that like bacterial culture, um, flow cytometry, then polymerase chain reaction etc. from that material. Okay, so multiple tests can be done using that material which aid in the diagnosis. And it has also got some disadvantages. The one thing is in thyroid nodules, it cannot differentiate between a follicular adenoma of thyroid and from follicular carcinoma. Okay, so follicular uh, adenoma cannot be differentiated from a follicular uh, carcinoma of thyroid. And second, we cannot determine the tumor grading as well as malignant subtype. So subtyping and uh, grading cannot be uh, done using a F, uh, fine needle aspiration cytology. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of FNAC. These are the indications. I am telling about the indications of only head and neck. There are so many indications in the abdomen, in the thorax etc. We are only concerned with that of head and neck. So any mass in the neck both solid as well as cystic can be uh, included parotid lesions then thyroid nodule I have already uh, told in the uh, under disadvantages we cannot differentiate difficult to differentiate from follicular adenoma from follicular carcinoma and palpable subcutaneous facial masses including that of the scalp and also this can be done in case of removal of fluid from seroma of pinna in some cases by doing multiple fine needle aspiration the seroma will be subsided but in most of the cases you will finally end up by doing a window cutting. So anyway this is also an indication of FNAC. So these are the equipments needed for FNAC. I am telling all this because at least the residents should do this uh, FNAC by yourself rather than to send the patient to pathology department. Because as surgeon you can locate the uh, lesion more accurately than the pathologist. So take all these equipments from pathology department, do the FNAC and send the uh, specimen again to pathologist so that they will uh, send you the diagnosis. Okay, so you need a 22 to 25 gauge needle. Then a 20 ml syringe is needed but a syringe holder is optional because with this syringe holder, uh, with the piston, you can manipulate it or you can um, take the, uh, do the FNAC much more efficiently. And uh, glass lights needed, alcohol swab and gauze pad for cleaning the area. 
a sterile glove in it. A small adhesive bandage is to put it after doing the procedure. And dip the glass slides after doing the after uh, make the slide making the slide. You can dip it in coplex jar with uh, 95 percent ethanol as a fixative. So all these are the equipments needed. And how will you do that? As I already told you, the first you need an informed consent. The there is a chance of minimal bleeding or bruises or chance of infection or a non-diagnostic aspirate. So it is always better to get an informed consent. Uh, because of chance of medical legal problems, always get an informed consent from the patient. So after getting the informed consent, next is anesthesia, whether anesthesia is needed or not. You, we are using fine needle. So most of the adult will tolerate it without anesthesia and in a very apprehensive patient you can use 1% uh, lidocaine with 1 in 1 lakh adrenaline or epinephrine okay 1 lakh epinephrine if needed you can give that uh, infiltration then regarding position for thyroid and parotid lesions it is better to keep the patient supine with extension of the neck Especially for thyroid lesions, supine with extension of neck by keeping a sandbag under the shoulders. And for parotid, supine with extension of neck and uh, uh, turn the face towards the opposite side so that the target lesion will be on the upper side. Okay. For all other neck node, it is better to keep the patient in a sitting position and push the node from behind the sternocleidomastoid so that it will be easily accessible okay so that is regarding position next is the technique and there are basically two techniques one is with aspiration and another one is without aspiration so with aspiration as the name suggests you are using the needle with the syringe with aspiration at least with a 1 ml of air and at the time of movement into the lesion, you are doing a negative suction over that. And without aspiration is just simply putting the needle into the target so that with the capillary action, the material will collect inside the needle. Okay. So, in both techniques, basically there are four steps. One is identification of the target. Target identification. So after uh, proper positioning of the patient, identify the target. And for larger lesion, if it is more than uh, five centimeters, there will be central area of necrosis. So it is better to take the sample from the periphery. Okay. So, because there is chance of central necrosis, it is better to take from the periphery. And if the lesion is very small, less than 1 cm, you can use, especially in case of thyroid area, can use an ultrasound guided FNAC. Or for transbronchial uh, lesions, you can use an endoscopic ultrasound assisted FNAC. That is an ultrasound uh, is kept over at the end of the endoscope. Okay. So, for that lesion, it is better to take from the center for the small lesions. And in between 1 to 5 cm, there will be area of central necrosis. So, uh, it is better to take two representative samples, one from the center and also one from the periphery. Okay, so target identification and second is target immobilization. In immo immobilization of the target, if it is big lesion, you can use the thumb and the index finger for immobilizing it and if the uh, lesion is very small it is better to use your index as well as a middle finger for larger one use like this and for smaller one look, use like this for immobilizing because the target should be immobilized otherwise it will move with the needle if you are not, not immobilizing it this will move with the target itself will move with the needle so that the quantity of material obtained will be very less. Okay. And third is introduction of the needle. So after immobilizing it, 
So after immobilization uh, session of the target, insert the needle. So at the time of insertion the needle into that, if it is an aspiration technique, the plunger of the syringe should be kept at 1 to 2 ml mark. 1 to 2 ml mark and by keeping it like that, put the needle. You should not keep on aspirating. There is no need for that. Just keep it at the 1 to 2 ml uh, uh, mark and then uh, insert it. Uh, I told you that after inserting the needle, uh, it should be aspirated by the to and fro movement. And for, to get two slides of adequate material, at least uh, 15 to 20 to, uh, uh, this uh, to and fro movement of the needle is required. And if you are seeing, after doing this uh, to and fro movement, you are seeing blood in the needle tip. It is better to stop it by at least by 10, 10 to and fro movement. Otherwise, you can go for 15 to 20 to and fro movement. And at each time, there is no need to increase the uh, negative suction. Put it, as I already told you, put it at the 1 to 2 uh, ml mark and do that. If you are using a non-aspiration technique, then also you can keep the needle. But do not do like this. Close the hub. Just put the needle and do the to and fro movement. Okay. The most important, the most important thing is that after aspiration, while at the time of withdrawal, you should not give a negative pressure. Our aim is to keep the aspirate in the needle itself. It should, it should not go into the barrel of the syringe. Okay. So, at the after aspiration, release the negative pressure. Take out the needle and remove the syringe. Again, uh, keep the slide and over that, Put the material, aspirate material. If you are also, if you are using the non-aspiration technique also, in that also, after uh, removal of the needle, take out the syringe and uh, put the aspirate into the slide by keeping the tip of the needle in contact with the slide. You can see in that. Here you can see FNA of thyroid nodule under ultrasound guidance. This is a classical movement of the needle inside the nodule. By pulling the plunger of the syringe, we are making a negative pressure so that the material is collected inside the needle. And after doing this, the aspirate should be collected in the slide and making the slide is also important. You should also know that and this is how the slide has to be made and it should be uh, immersed in fixative usually a 95% ethanol in a complex jar and sent to pathology department. And in most of the cases complications are very less. In some cases there will be a minimal bleeding that you can uh, stop, it will be stopped by, put, uh, by putting a pressure uh, bandage or a uh, pressure application of around uh, 2 to 5 minutes. And if the patient is complaining of pain, you can give an uh, analgesic. The antibiotics are not needed in cases unless you suspect a very gross infection. Okay, so this is how you do a fine needle aspiration cytology. And next time onwards, do it by yourself. Don't send the patient to pathologist, but only the uh, slide preserved in a complex jar with a preservative or a fixative. Uh, we should be sent to the pathologist. Thank you.